Wait, you're telling me that DW finally added a servant with a boob window to the game, and it's the one after Valentine's Day? We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Hello everyone, Soberoni of G&A Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for the servant whose fashion choices make him look like he's about two seconds away from a Super Bowl-style wardrobe malfunction, Odysseus. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize him effectively, and an overall grade comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 5-star servants. So if you're ready to ride the waves with this common Rider look-alike, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up, and you can help out the channel. But for now, onto Odysseus' stats. Odysseus has a max HP of 13,284 and a max attack of 11,795. For a 5 star rider, Odysseus' HP is about average, but he does boast a high attack stat for his class. And even when compared to the other 5 star servants outside of his class, Odysseus maintains a higher than average attack, but somewhat low HP. When it comes to his command cards, Odysseus has 4 hits on his quick card, 4 hits on his arts, 3 hits on his buster, and 5 hits on his extra card. He he has an NP gain rate of 0.58% and a star rate of 8.9%. Odysseus's star generating is strong due to his high hit counts, but his NP gain in particular is excellent. His stat spread favors offense, but Odysseus has strong stats across the board, which makes him feel more like an all-rounder type. Taking a look at his skills, Odysseus' first skill is Insight of the Cunning General, rank B++. This skill increases the party's quick and arch card effectiveness for 3 turns, between 10 and 20%, depending on level. And it also draws the attention of all enemies to the party, except for one targeted ally, for 3 turns. His second skill is Single-Mindedness Love, rank A. It charges his NP gauge between 20 and 30%, and increases his crit star absorption for 1 turn, between 500 and 1000%, both depending on level. It also grant some charm immunity for 5 turns. And finally, his last skill is Aegis Divine Body Boundary Field, rank A. It grants him 1 turn of invincibility, and it increases his own buff removal resistance for 1 turn, between 50 and 100%, while also increasing his defense for 3 turns, between 20 and 30%, both depending on level. For his passives, he has Magic Resistance rank B, which increases his debuff resist by 17.5%, Riding rank B+, which increases his quick card effectiveness by 9%, and Protection of the Messenger God rank B, which gives him immunity to the Pig debuff, and increases his arch card effectiveness by 10%. Taking a look at his deck and Noble Phantasm, Odysseus has an Arts Quick deck, with Quick Quick, Arts Arts Buster, and an Arts Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm is Troia Hippos, which deals AoE damage to all enemies with between a 450 and 750% damage modifier depending on level. It also removes all offensive buffs from enemies and increases Odysseus's NP damage for one turn between 30 and 70% depending on overcharge. You may be surprised and pleased to know that Odysseus's ascension mat requirements do not include Hero's Proof. In fact, he doesn't need any bronze mats. For level ascension, he'll need 8 gears, 10 horseshoes, 12 feathers, and 5 scarabs. Gears are farmable at Barrel Tower in Shinjuku, where they have a 46% drop rate. Horseshoes have a 44% drop rate at the Land of the Void in Camelot. Phoenix Feathers drop at the Town Hall in Salem, with a 35% drop rate. And Scarabs can be found at the Deimos Islands in Atlantis, with a 12% drop rate. For skill leveling, Odysseus is going to need 15 Horseshoes, 15 Gears, 15 Reactor Cores, and 24 Crowns per skill. Reactor Cores drop at the Prison Camp in Lost Belt 3, with a 20% drop rate and crowns have a 38% drop rate at the Thanatos Islands in Atlantis. Fresh from his appearance in Atlantis, Odysseus will be dropping just in time for Caldia Boy. But is his summonable version as badass as he was in the story? Well, if the stats are anything to go by, then yes. Odysseus definitely does not disappoint in that department, sporting both high attack and star generating as well as exceptional NP gain. His HP does leave something to be desired, but Odysseus makes up for that through his offensive synergy. As a rider, his star weight is naturally one of the highest in the game, and he is able to produce more than enough crit stars to take full advantage of that. Odysseus will crit effectively and often, which is great not only from a damage perspective, but it also drastically improves his average NP gain as well. Odysseus also benefits from his powerful passives in riding and protection of the messenger god, which give him big buffs to his star generating and NP gain respectively, for even more synergy. These passives also work really well with Odysseus's active skills. His first skill, Insight of the Cunning General, increases the party's quick and arch 
Hearts card effectiveness by 20%, and it casts taunts on other party members. There is a lot to dissect with this skill. Firstly, it's AoE, so Odysseus can actually act as a semi-support and provide these buffs to the entire party, which gives him a nice bit of utility. Secondly, while 20% may not seem like a lot, keep in mind that Odysseus actually receives 30% total buff to Arts and Quick thanks to his passives, so it isn't as small a buff as it looks on paper. But finally, and most interestingly, this skill also has the unique side effect of casting taunt on every ally except the one that you target for 3 turns. This is effectively an anti-taunt, because whoever you target with this skill will not be targeted by enemies for 3 turns. This gives Odysseus a lot of versatility. He can use it on himself as additional protection, he can cast it on a fragile ally like a berserker to protect them, or he can even use it to draw enemy fire toward tanky allies like Jean, Mosh, and Yang. Odysseus even has additional tankiness in his third skill, Aegis, which grants him one turn of invincibility, buff removal resistance, and defense. So not only can Odysseus avoid enemy attacks completely with his anti-taunt, but he can just tank them as well with his unremovable invincibility if his first skill is on cooldown. The 30% defense buff also lasts for 3 turns, while the skill itself has a 5 turn cooldown, which essentially gives Odysseus a very high uptime damage mitigation in the rare event that he ever actually does take a hit. And finally, Odysseus has his very own NP charge skill, Single Mindedness, which also gives him additional Star Absorb and Charm Immunity. The Charm Immunity and Star Absorb aren't all that important, since Odysseus already has naturally high star weight, but the 30% NP charge is massive for looping his Noble Phantasm and using him to effectively wave clear. And that's why you should level the NP charge first, followed by his card buff skill for additional damage, and then Aegis last. For his append skills, Odysseus Odysseus doesn't really have anything that's worth taking, other than just taking mana loading for that additional starting NP charge to make farming easier. And speaking of farming, Odysseus's NP is an AoE arts attack that removes offensive enemy buffs and increases his NP damage. The utility of removing offensive buffs can be nice, but ultimately Odysseus's Noble Phantasm is best used for farming. The NP buff goes well with his arts buff, and with his arts buff lasting 3 turns coupled with the NP charge skill, he can easily 3 turn farm consistently in Castoria teams. But even prior to Castoria's arrival, Odysseus is one of FGO's best NP loopers. His insanely high base NP gain combined with his arts buff and his charge make it incredibly easy for him to spam out his Noble Phantasm in just about any kind of arts team. But on top of being an excellent farmer, Odysseus can make for a surprisingly tanky and unique semi-support. His low cooldown invincibility and defense buff let him stick around for a long time in even the most challenging fights, and his party-wide card buff not only makes him useful in any quick or arts team, but it also doubles as incredibly strong protection for fragile glass cannons. To that extent, Odysseus is a highly versatile servant who can be built as your main farmer or splashed into almost any quick or arts team to provide a little extra utility. However, he does fall woefully short in one critical area, firepower. He lacks any high uptime attack or crit buffs, and the card buffs that he does have are more useful for their utility than their damage. And much like Da Vinci Lily, despite having a very spammable NP, it is considerably weak, which can make it difficult to farm harder free quests at NP1. And speaking of Da Vinci Lily, Odysseus is not as consistent in arts teams as she is, which puts him in a difficult spot since farm farming is supposed to be his main job, and that theme holds true for Odysseus's other roles as well, since there are more specialized rider servants who will perform better than him for any given situation. Odysseus unfortunately very much falls into the good at everything but not the best at anything category. But don't mistake that to mean that Odysseus isn't a strong servant. If he's in a good team, he can absolutely perform at the level of a top tier servant. He is versatile enough to fit into almost any arts team, but he does especially well in farming comps with allies that can provide him with additional NP gain and NP charge, like Paracelsus, Neurobride, and Tamamo. Paracelsus and Tamamo both provide incredibly strong NP gain buffs, with Tamamo even being able to bolster Odysseus his damage considerably, which can help him hit over that high HP enemy wave. Nero also provides a strong NP gain and damage steroid, and she is a very strong partner for Odysseus in longer fights as well, thanks to her healing and defense buff. Outside of farming teams, Odysseus can be a semi-support for glass cannon art servants like Vlad, Artorias,
Victoria Archer, and Mandricardo. As one of the few Arts Berserkers, Vlad does benefit a ton from Odysseus's Arts buff, and the Anti-Taunt helps keep Vlad safer from damage for a full 3 turns. Similarly, the buff can help protect Archer Arturia while fueling her NP gain, so that she can loop even easier, and Odysseus's buff can also help offset the Taunt demerit on Mandricardo's own skill too. Odysseus' Bond CE is Symbol of Adventure. It buffs the party's arts and quick art effectiveness by 10%. This can be a decent CE if you're planning on using Odysseus as a dedicated support, but for the most part, whether you're using him to farm or as a support, Odysseus works best with CEs that can buff his arts card effectiveness and give him starting NP charge, like Dive to Blue, Painting Summer, Mission Start, or even Black Grail if you want to sacrifice consistency for a little extra damage. In the future, I highly recommend picking up Ocean Flyer. It's a free CE releasing next year that increases Arch Card effectiveness, NP damage, and it grants starting NP charge, all while giving full attack stats. So it's basically a straight upgrade over Dive to Blue. As for command codes, I like Mages of Flowers just to give Odysseus a little bit of extra NP charge, but you can also go with any command code that increases star absorption on his Arch cards. Overall, Odysseus is a strong rider who excels at both farming and and in a general use role. He does suffer from the Jack of All Trades syndrome, very similar to the previous Rider Europa, and his overall attack power, especially on his NP, does leave a lot to be desired, but he does have the distinct advantage of being an excellent farmer for those of you who don't have Da Vinci Lily, Zerker Musashi, or Space Ishtar, and his versatility and unique anti-taunt mechanic give him a very good niche in almost any arts team, since he'll always be able to provide good utility to the party. So all in all, Odysseus gets a B plus from me. He's a strong servant that has the potential to be top tier, but he unfortunately shares a similar issue that many archer servants suffer from, being part of a class that is just filled to the brim with ridiculously OP servants who often serve as better alternatives. And those are my thoughts on Odysseus. Just like with Europa, he is a very difficult servant to assess because the class he's in is just filled with so many heavy hitters. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. Sobroni out. Later.